Everybody. Whoa. <laughs> Hello and uh, welcome to our little clinic here. I want to thank uh, Musicians Workshop and I want to thank uh, SWR for having us here. My name is Brian Beller and I play in a band called Mike Keneally and Beer for Dolphins, who you're looking at right now. And we happen to be swinging through on tour here and we're uh, playing The Saint tonight in Asbury Park, if anyone's so inclined. Anybody familiar with The Saint? What's the general opinion of the saint in the room? I heard dump and I heard very saintly. Can those two possibly coexist? It is a saintly dump. Okay, it's a saintly dump. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, the reason that we're here is because uh, I wholeheartedly endorse SWR. And uh, while I'm not traveling around in this merry caravan, I actually happen to work at SWR as a product specialist and I also do some artist relations. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some fun. We're going to play for a little while. And then after that, I'll talk to you a little bit about how I got involved with SWR, why I think they're so cool, and uh, a little bit of uh, technical, hopefully educational information for everybody. For now, we're just going to start with fun stuff, i.e. playing. And little snare rolls like that. Do that again. Awesome. This is a, what, what, what kind of drum kit is that? It's a Roland V drums, man. Ah. Roland V drums. I've never seen them before. They're pretty cool. And I don't think Jason's ever played them before either, so this is going to be really interesting. In any event, which one? Okay. Ready? Sure. Let's go. One, two, three. I pray told us that 
Thanks. Thanks. Can we turn the electronic drums level up a little bit? Is that what he's doing? Cool. The rest of the balance okay? Okay, so uh, anyway, let's just tell you a little bit about how I got involved with, uh, with SWR, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the, the very unique rig that I'm using here at this point. Uh, back in, how long ago was it again? Over 10 years ago? It's like about 10 years ago now, unbelievably. I was uh, a freshman at Berkeley College of Music, and I was uh, getting ready to go to school, and I needed some new equipment and I was very excited to get some new equipment and my family was very excited to get me some new equipment. So I got some new equipment and it was new and it was equipment uh, and it sounded better than anything I had before but uh, when I got to Berkeley and everyone had all their, their special setups and all the little re rehearsal rooms that they have there and I stumbled by one room in particular where I thought the bass sound was extraordinary and I walked in and the guy was playing through this amp called an SWR SM400 which is the first amp they ever made. It's the amp that I use on stage. Unfortunately, I don't have one here that I can demo for you, but if you come to Asbury Park tonight, you can see it in all its glory. Uh, I asked the guy where he got it, and he said, you know, music store. <laughs> so I went ahead and realized that it was one of those pieces of gear that I wasn't gonna be able to live without until I owned it. Uh, and so what I did was I took the piece of equipment that I was just procured for me and got rid of it at great expense so I could have this amp, and that made me happy because it sounded more like the instrument that I was playing reproduced accurately than anything I'd heard before. It transformed the, what I was playing, I thought, from just a bunch of electronics into an actual hunk of wood, and wood is good. So I was happy for a little while, but I still had my other speaker cabinet, and sure enough, uh, soon after I got that SWR amp, the speaker cabinet started to sound worse, and this really confused me because I had this amp that sounded better, but the speaker cabinet sounded worse. So I brought the speaker cabinet in for repair, and I said, can you please tell me why this sounds so bad? And he said, well, here's the problem right here. And he pointed to two of the speakers in there, and they were just shredded. And I was like, uh, 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 everything was fine until I got this great sounding new amp. What happened? And uh, he explained to me, and other people explained to me, that uh, at the time, technology was such that that amplifier was reproducing frequencies, lower frequencies, more accurately than certain speaker cabinets, like the one that I had, could handle. So when I played notes that were that low, or in that range, uh, the speaker cabinet had a hard time dealing with it. If, if you think that it's ridiculous that a bass speaker cabinet couldn't handle that sort of stuff, I mean, what's it for then? Uh, that's what I was up against. So I went ahead and got an SWR Goliath II speaker cabinet. Uh, a 410 that handled 500 watts and had a tweeter horn in it, and that made me really, really happy. And then what en eventually what ended up happening was uh, I left Berkeley College of Music in 1993, and I joined Dweezil Zappa's band, Z, which is where I met Mr. Back to You right now, Mike Neely. There he is. We were in that band together, and we had lots of fun, and uh, I was able to add on to my rig really easily because... Uh, there's a feature on the back of, of, of that particular amp I was talking about in which you can use the effect send as a controllable preamp out. So as opposed to having to go ahead and buy a whole new amp because you need a little bit more power because all of a sudden you're standing next to a guitar player who has a rig the size of this store, uh, now you can just go ahead and take that effect send and bring it to another power amp and you still have the same exact sound that you've, that you've been dealing with the whole time. Bring that power amp to another SWR Goliath 410 cabinet, which is what I bought. And now I've got a big rock and roll rig. I didn't have to go ahead switching everything around. So that's what I've got now. And uh, what ended up, eventually ended up happening was in 1995, me and Mike Keneally decided we would have more fun if we just kind of hung out together uh, without Dweezil. So that's what we did. And uh, we, this name of the band is Mike Keneally and Beer for Dolphins. And we've been at it uh, in this somewhat current form for about two or three years now. This is Mark Ziegenhagen over here on keyboards. And this is Jason Harrison Smith back there on drums. And this is Bob Teddy on backing guitar and backing vocals and backing. <laughs> and being backing. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of how I got the, the, the whole thing together with SWR uh, about a year ago. 
uh, I started I started working over there, and uh, it's been really educational because I've been able to see how they put this stuff together. Uh, they make everything by hand still. Every one of the amplifiers actually goes into a room and, and, and gets played and tested and heated up. In this case, these combo amps that you see right here, which I'm going to talk about more in the next break, but when you see something like this, uh, the chassis in electronics is manufactured by hand. Then they have the speaker cabinet, uh, which is empty, and they put the speaker in it. And then once they put the chassis in there, everything can work, but there, sometimes there will be these, you know, when, when you have wires resonating in a small box like this, and there's 100 or 120 watts of power, sometimes there will be these little tiny rattles. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but especially when a, a small combo amp uh, gets, gets shipped, those rattles tend to magnify. We go to great lengths to actually sit down and listen to each one and make sure that wires don't rattle against sides of things and stuff like that. So though, the QC is very, very heavy. I am in a fortunate position because I'm working with a company that I like to work with. And although there are some people in the industry who tend to work with a company that is easiest to work with for some sort of financial reason, i.e. someone will give them free gear or 5,000 bucks to stand in an ad or something like that, uh, I'm glad to say that I feel just as comfortable standing in front of this stuff even if I had to pay for it, which in most cases I did because I got it before I had the deal. Let's play some more. I see a metal, so let's move away from the stuff. Okay. Side 
Those drums like have the really heavy nine inch nails compression going right now, don't they? Really? No, go go ahead and play them for a second because they sound so cool. The harder I hit it, like I know, I know, I know. Just go ahead, just go ahead and do it. You gotta check this out. Oh my god, that sound needs to be real. That sound needs to be recorded. That needs to be. They're, they're recording with that all the time now. Isn't that like a Marilyn Manson type drum sound? Anyway. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, SWR, I should probably tell you a little bit about their history. Uh, the only person who's ever designed a product for this company, his name is Steve W. Robbie, hence SWR. And uh, he started working at a company called Acoustic. Anybody remember the, uh, the amplifier company, Acoustic? Nobody? One, two, oh, you're dating yourselves, all of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well unfortunately, uh, the company doesn't, doesn't exist any longer really, but, but back in, uh, in the 70s, they were kind of King Sam of the bass amplifier business to the point where uh, Jocko Pistorius was their main guy. And Steve uh, started working there as a regular old line technician and worked his way up to repair technician and then eventually was designing a product for them. And it got to the point where he was important enough where he was the one who was personally in charge of maintaining Jocko's rig. So, I mean, you know, let alone how difficult maintaining Jocko was personally, I'm sure his rig was as, an equally as difficult challenge. But somehow he managed and they did really well for a while, but then unfortunately, like I said, in the late 70s, early 80s, acoustic went the way of the dodo. And uh, Steve found himself looking for work. So after bouncing around to a couple of amplifier companies, he decided that he'd be best off designing his own stuff. And uh, the first amplifier that he came out with was the SM400, the one that I told you about. Uh, it's a stereo amp. You could bridge it mono for the, the combined power of the two power amps in there, or you can run them in stereo and biamp. Who knows what biamping is? What is biamping for a t-shirt? Very good. See me after the clinic. Uh, Biamping is the act of uh, when you have two different power amps and you send high frequencies to one power amp and low frequencies to another, you split them, and you send them to do different speaker cabinets which are specifically designed to handle highs and lows. Uh, it was a big deal back in the 80s. It's not such a big deal now because people are designing cabinets that are meant to handle the entire spectrum, but back then it was a big deal. This amplifier featured that capability as well as the capability to it had four graphic EQ sliders as well as a frequency dialer for each slider. So the EQ possibilities were fairly infinite. And he made these amps and he started basically throwing them around into rehearsal studios in Los Angeles to see if they would catch on. And sure enough, uh, a bass player named Freddie Washington, who's a pretty heavy session cat, uh, was then and still is now, got his hands on it and decided it was, it was cool enough to take to, to the session that he was doing that week, which just happened to be the We Are The World session, which was kind of a big deal. And uh, it was one of the first times, if not the first time, that uh, an amplifier was used to record directly into the studio. Not just taking your bass direct into the console, but taking the bass to an amplifier. Not having to hook the amplifier up to a speaker and then mic the speaker and then getting all sorts of weird overtones and any of that. Just straight out of the amp, XLR line, right into the studio console. So a couple people heard that and said, hey, that's pretty cool. And. Uh, Basically, the company grew from there. They started out just making amplifiers, and then eventually they moved on to speaker cabinets when they realized that I was not the only person in the United States who had had that problem when their amplifiers were putting out all these accurately reproduced low frequencies and other manufacturer speaker cabinets were not handling them very well. They decided to fix that problem by making their own speaker cabinets, which they did quite well with. But what I should do is because I have this, a very interesting rig standing in front of me here, I should probably tell you a little bit about it. For years, SWR was designing stuff basically uh, geared towards the professional musician. Uh, High-end amplifiers, two preamps, solid-state power amps, very serious stuff. And uh, every single 15-year-old, you know, stu just starting out music student or maybe some people who were on a limited budget couldn't necessarily afford all of the pro-line SWR stuff. So that what they wanted to do was make a line that was a little bit more easily affordable but still sounded the same and had the same quality control, and that was uh, the birth of the working man's line. And uh, this is what I'm using right now. This little combo amp on top of here is called the working man's 12, and uh, it's got a 12-inch Celestian speaker in it, and it's 100 watts. 
That's it. And uh, it is a really, really good sounding warm base cabinet for something so tiny. And the nice thing about it is, if you want to, you can stack it on top of something. It's got an extension, an extension speaker jack in the back and you can hook up another speaker cabinet to it. And just below it, I happen to have something called the Working Man's 2x10 cabinet, which has got two 10-inch SWR speakers and handles 200 watts and is priced ridiculously low. I think the list on it is like, uh, I don't have a price list in front of me. It's like $399, $359. It's really low. And even if it's not that low, they'll sell it to you here for exactly that low. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this is a really, really small, compact, multi-piece rig and you can still get a, a fairly decent professional sound out of it. The big difference between the working man stuff and the Proline stuff is that the working man's line has solid state preamps as opposed to the, the groove tube which is in the Proline preamps. But listening to it you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference unless you were really, really standing side by side and your ears were wide open. I mean, it still sounds like an SWR amp, it still gets the same QC and I still like using it. It's 120 watts it's putting out right now. When you add the extension speaker, it adds a little bit of power to the power, which we'll talk about in the next break. But 120 watts, not bad. Let's play. Let's, yeah, I want to do the, the funky dilemma thing too. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, really? So, uh, is there a time limit? John? Oh. Oh, okay. All right, well, does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions at all? Anything at all? Weather, Route 9, why I like New Jersey? What's up? Excuse me? Okay, my road rig is uh, an, an SM400 with two Goliath 410 cabinets. That's basically the clean rig. What I do is I bridge the SM400 into one 410. Then I take the mono effect send as a preamp out, send it to a separate power amp, and that powers the other 410. That's just the clean rig. Oh, you're saying the playing has to... Okay, I'll shut up now. We'll play until 4. We'll talk after that. We'll end the clinic with a big talk.
So hold a spirit to get Go grab your bear Fall deep in the snake We need to bring your hair And when the bottom cuts Stakes are running blood and red Run! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That concludes the little playing portion of the clinic here, but we are going to talk. Thirty-five seconds late. That's right. So we're going to talk for a little bit longer here. But first, let me thank the incredible band who is being incredibly generous for, for tagging along and doing all this. Mike Keneally, first of all, of course. Mark Ziegenhagen on keyboards. Jason Harrison Smith on drums. On V drums. On Trent Reznor V drums. Yeah, exactly. And Bob Teddy on sunglasses. So, I was, uh, uh, first of all, I also wanted to remind you that we do have some merchandise for sale back there. Please be kind and buy some so that we can make it to the next diner on Route 9. <laughs> and uh, I was just in the middle of answering your question. So let me finish up. Uh, I said that I used the 400 for bridging into one particular 410. Is there something you wanted to say? No. Okay. And then I used uh, the separate power amp for getting into the other 410. And then I also used something called the SWR Interstellar Overdrive, which uh, is a, a base distortion unit. And uh, I split the signal on the front, and I have a third cabinet just a 210 that I use just for the dirty signal and I stomp it on and off. So that's my rig right now. It's kind of complicated, but thanks to the guy right there in the SWR shirt, Thomas Nordig, it is as manageable as eating an apple pie. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Grandma? No questions? Oh. Okay, I think it's time to stop this now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Musicians Workshop. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and thank you, SWR. And don't forget to come to the St. Asbury Park tonight. Thank All you. right.